Hi everyone and welcome to Chargeback Forward's unboxing of, oh, not so much an unboxing, but we are going to unbox the Street Fighter 25th Anniversary Edition. This is more of a Street Fighter Memories episode, as Street Fighter's been around for a long time. We've played it a lot in the arcades and too I am, much. yeah too much exactly, and I am unfortunately old enough to remember even when the first one came out back in 87. And I'm sure, uh, you know, kids nowadays or younger viewers watching this video don't even really know what an arcade is because they don't technically really even exist in too many places anymore. And there were a lot of characters, uh, not talking about Street Fighter, I mean people in the arcade <laughs> that we used to play against. And I'm sure we've got some, uh, some stories to fill up some time. So I'll start digging through these contents and we'll, uh, we'll rhyme off a few stories for you of our memories of Street Fighter. Now, I like this because early on when we did unboxings, when they were actually unboxings, I don't know if we were like Depeche Mode or whatever, like, you know, performing behind a curtain because we're too shy. <laughs> but um, we had the thing where we were going to focus on the actual unboxing. And, well, apparently some people like looking at our ugly mugs a hell of a lot more. So as we're talking, you get to see this. But you also get to see this, right? All right, so right off the bat, before you even get into it, this is, this is awesome. <laughs> It's a real gee belt too, eh? I feel the quality of that. That's like a real gee belt. Yeah. Straight from the factories of China. <laughs> yeah. Street Fighter, man. This is, I remember when our friend Dave and I uh, first played Street Fighter 2. We are kids, we got on the bus, traveling around Raccoon City, going to some crazy, obscure arcade in some like ghetto mall, and we're just mystified. There's a crowd of people around that one machine. And it was just so new. Awesome. <laughs> it was just like back in the day though, it's like it's not like you can go onto the internet. We read about it in the magazine. Kids talked in the playgrounds, you know, like I don't even know how we found out about it, but sure enough, Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition. Both games, us as little kids, got to go see. And what I loved about it is even though all the moves had been like, um, you know, put out there in terms of mechanics, the fireball, the uppercut, the hurricane kick, there was no, con there was no like gaming conscious like psyche at the time, right? So it's not like do a fireball, you know, it's down, down forward, forward punch, or do a sonic boom, charge back forward. Hey. Ah. <laughs> In case some of you didn't figure it out, that's where we got it from. So it was amazing seeing like the panic, and the panic was all from me because I was pretty good at the game. I played through versus the World, World Warriors, you know, like Sankey and Honda and Chummy and all that. And I started playing the bosses. You get through Balrog, the palms are sweating, you know, I'm all like, it's I'm all clammy, and then we get on to Vega. It's all flying around and shit. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I think I did a fireball before. And I saw someone do an uppercut. So when he goes climbing on the fence, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get it. And because one time I pulled off an uppercut, I thought I know how to do it. It was desperation. <laughs> so there I am, just like, rah, 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 with the controller and the buttons. And guess what? I died. <laughs> and someone had already placed their quarter on the sill to yep. play next. And even back then when it first came out, People kind of didn't really play versus. They actually had the patience because they wanted to see the game play. Yep. So that's like I think that's like my earliest memory of like Street Fighter 2. Sweaty arcades. Oh man. Everyone trying to figure out the moves. Yeah. yeah. And and perverted old men trying to put quarters <laughs> in Dave's pocket. <laughs> That didn't really happen, but that happened to someone else. That was even more gross. <laughs> Whatever. So my um, my first Street Fighter 2 story actually has to do with more of the home versions. I was uh, in the mid 90s uh, working at a video game store. I know, giant surprise. And we were going to hold a tournament uh, with Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, which was on the 3DO, which was my favorite version of that game. <clears throat> And we had this customer had come awesome to the version. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's so, so awesome. It's so fucking good. <laughs> uh, so we had this customer, actually let me put the batteries in the right here as I tell the story, who would come in and a bit of a, you know, a bit of a pain in the ass, but you know, you deal with the public and you do what you do. But then this guy started coming in 
uh, bragging how his mother had terminal cancer. What? And, yeah, and how he was so excited because he was going to spend all his inheritance money. And, don't get me wrong, this kid wasn't abused by his parents or anything like that. He was just some spoiled brat, basically. How old was he? He, at the time, was probably in his early 20s. So, how old were you? At the time, I would have been uh, still, like, late teens. Where'd you bury the body? <laughs> well, here's the deal. So he would come in with this list, literally a list of stuff he was going to spend his inheritance on. And his mother was still in the hospital, hadn't even died yet. And he had, you know, all the expensive things, you know, in the mid-90s, like 3DO, CDI, all these games, you know, the Final Fantasy III, Chrono Trigger, all these games written down on this list. And I remember just loathing this person so much, because I thought, you know, what a scummy thing to do. As, you know, especially, like I said, there was nothing wrong at home. His parents never did anything bad to him. He was just a spoiled brat. So, that's good. <laughs> So, we had the Street Fighter tournament, and he was in it, and I was in it, and at the time, I was actually, you know, actually pretty good at Super Street Fighter Tur Turbo, because I played it so much. So, lo and behold, just like a movie, you couldn't write this down, it was me and him in the finals. <laughs> he picked Vega, I picked Cammy, of course, and I beat him. I beat him bad. And I never, Terrence can test this, rarely show any emotion when I play a game. When I beat that guy, I just did the fist pump, the jump, the, I was so excited. So at the end, they come up to me and you know to get my prize for winning the tournament. And the prize was to, at the time, pick any game you want off the shelf, which was a really big deal at the time. And I looked right at the guy who was offering me the prize, and I said, I don't want anything. I said, all I wanted to do was beat him. And I pointed at him, and I walked away. No prize, no nothing. No shit. Yeah. So that was the most satisfying Street Fighter moment. Hey, shut up out there. <laughs> Fuck, man. Remember the days where like, we're like, we used to film in here and we're all like, close the windows! <laughs> now we just don't care. <laughs> hey, here's the thing, here's like a, I'm a pioneer, I'm a legend, I'm Street Fighter. Here's this poster here, right? And it basically shows, I'm seeing this one, it shows like, uh, so four mainstay characters from Street Fighter 2, uh, Chun-Li, Sangeef, Ryu and Guile, and they're all like, I'm, and then it shows like, for Ryu, it shows like the, the move pattern for the, uh, the fireball. Funny thing is, up at the top, Guile has, I'm, I don't know. Oh. What do you think about that? <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you think about that? I think someone could get sued. <laughs> <laughs> don't sue us. <laughs> Fight! <laughs> Street Fighter 2 cost $99.99 when it came out in 1992. Two. Yep. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> it was $1992, and that's a Canadian dollars, uh, $99, which really the exchange rate wasn't what it was like now. It was, no, there was yeah. no parity. It was like 80 cents to the dollar yeah. back then. And for those of you who don't know, like, there's a bit of a myth about how much people make off of games. Like, Nowadays, if you go into a, a store and see a game for $59.99, the game probably costs the store $53, bucks, $54 bucks around there, right? That's why whenever you go into that god-awful fucking EV Games and GameStop... <laughs> yeah. Oh! oh. <laughs> whenever you go into one of those stores, it's like, yeah... Hey! Hey, you from Borderlands? And, and you know, the game came out today, and then the next thing you know, they're trying to sell you a used copy for three dollars less. Yeah. Why? Because the markup is huge for them. They buy exactly. it. They buy it for food stamps, and then they sell it <laughs> for almost retail. So, but uh, can, can I can I tell EB and GameStop to fuck themselves? I don't know if we can do it, but we can try it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but back in the early '90s, it wasn't really like that. Because uh, there wasn't any of these big box stores really selling games. It was more specialty stores they had to go to. So the margin on games was much higher. And I was talking to my friend who uh, who now works with me in the same office and at the time was selling games. And he said literally all these sellers got together and just basically agreed we're going to make as much money as humanly possible on this game. And it worked because we all paid it. <laughs> we all did. What's your friend's name? That's Marty. And I know you're watching this, Marty. Marty, and <laughs> fuck yourself. Seriously, dude. Kids, like, stole to get that amount of money. It went beyond asking your parents. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Marty, how could you? How could you? I met you. You're a nice guy, so... <laughs> it ends here. <laughs> uh, and as I pull out, what I really liked about this collection is 
the fact that Capcom gave us an 11 disc soundtrack, the key word being disc, not a piece of paper with some code to download some horrible compressed MP3s. Gotta work. Yeah, exactly. I'll never forgive Sony for that. But these are just multiple tracks for bloody AOL after Street Fighter. Fuck you, Sony! Fan made mix of Street Fighter 3. Um, I think I may, I, I think I may be developing Tourette's. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> That's fine. No offense to those with Tourette's. <laughs> Unless it's really cool Tourette's. You know? Like on South Park? Like on South Park. I got a golden too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> so, my, my, my last uh, personal story about Street Fighter 2 really is. Is that an awesome oh, first race after I missed? Disc 2. Is, um, Don't put them in your carousel yet. I won't. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle I actually got a career in business because that's what I went to school for, but let's put it this way I didn't last long in college, and that was because of Street Fighter. Uh, at the time, two reasons. Number one, at the time, Street Fighter for 3DO had come out, and that's all I freaking played. So I literally lived a 10 minute walk away from my college I was going to, and if I woke up at 8, I had a class at 9, I literally look up the clock and I'm like, I'm never gonna make it, and just play Street Fighter all day. And the, <laughs> and the times I went to school, here's a problem. My school had two things. It had a Taco Bell, which I love Taco Bell, and it had a Street Fighter machine. So I would just literally play Street Fighter all day and eat Taco Bell. I kid you not, my math book was still in its original wrapper. I didn't even open it. So it's uh, now watch my boss be watching this and think, you know, no, I, I lied about my credentials to get the job. But, it doesn't matter, it's been working there forever. Yeah, but, uh, it made you a lot of money. <laughs> but that's uh, but that's what it is, man. Street Fighter, I think that's the, the basis of this, of this amazing collection that Capcom has put together, is that Street Fighter is really is a part of our culture now. And not only video game culture, but pop culture. Uh, also in this collection, obviously the games, but the games are almost like the most non-important thing of this collection, to be honest with you. I already have all these. It's all the school stuff, the art book. That's a collector right there. Already has the game. Yeah. And what I'm looking forward to, uh, anniversary film, and Street Fighter movies, um, the old animated ones and the TV series on Blu-ray. Now I'm really hoping, as obviously I haven't opened those yet, these are actual 1080p versions. I'm a little worried, because even the DVD versions were just dumps of the laser disc. So, I'm hoping that they're actually, you know, proper ratio and everything. But, we'll find out. Either way, if you haven't seen Street Fighter the animated movie, it's it's really, really good. Can I Please do. So, uh, I came with a certificate too. My if you're ever wondering what number Mike had, he's what, 26,000? 26,429 out of 30,000. And I actually, I had no idea, this was just luck of the draw because I pre-booked this a couple months ago. What's the material? That, um, I had no idea this is actually was numbered limited. I had no idea this was just limited. So hopefully everyone out there who wanted this got it. That's always my main concern is that that's the collector in me, um, you know, being concerned for other collectors because I know the pain when you decide maybe later that you wanted something and you know that's always a it's it's a double-edged sword you know you, you get it right away and you spend the crazy amount of money but also you know you get what you get how much did this cost this was 150 bucks all right so um this is another reason why Mike's mortgage isn't being paid this month <laughs> But uh, 150 bucks may give you a little leeway, but considering you see Mike, uh, obviously he's a legit collector, and having so can I have those games? No. All right. So <laughs> being a legit, I already, I already have. Uh, being a legit collector, uh, he still spends 150 dollars on this. So uh, this is this is beautiful. Even the box is like. This is gorgeous. I wasn't expecting it to look like this with the uh, like suede, fake suede, Akuma's uh, symbol on there, which I'm sure if you um, Google, you'll know. That this actually stands for several different things. Heaven, um, immortal. Immortal. Yeah, so it's pretty much the embodiment of what Akuma is, and you can read Akuma's biography online. It's just, you know, I, I get, Terrence knows me better than anyone, I get almost way too absorbed in some of these games, especially ones made by Capcom, because they have such a wonderful backstory. But I'm glad you guys uh, could join us and enjoy this with us. Hopefully, uh, you enjoyed our, our Street Fighter memories. What edition of uh, Resident Evil did you get? I got the one for the 360 that they're calling the. Archives edition. So that will come with a collection of games which I already have as well, but I'm hoping it comes in a nice big box. So you're not getting the jacket? No, I'm not getting the uh, jacket. <laughs> not only would my mortgage not be paid, I would have groceries. Uh, actually, groceries aren't that important. Mr. Noodle, dude. Mr. Noodle. <laughs> in college. <laughs> That's true. Guys, thanks for sharing uh, 
Oh man, I feel like Johnny. Johnny, this one's for you. Thanks for uh, sh allowing us to share some memories with you. It was nice to go back and check that out. But seriously, it was. It's kind of funny, like the amount of things that uh, I don't even know sometimes what our show is even about. People ask us about the show, and I, and I, I tried like a like a marketing spiel to make it as like broad as possible to get people to watch it, but. It's kind of funny, this is probably one of the first times we've sat down and really spent some time talking about one of our favorite series. Yep. If you guys watched the epic rant, we made a promise that we were going to get into that. And Street Fighter, I, I hope, was one of the pictures that I showed, but it definitely was meant to be there. I mean, come on, Ryu, like, lit up. <laughs> really? The funny thing is, this $150 that I spent on this, is actually minimal compared to the amount of money I spent on Street Fighter for the years. So. This is true. This is true. <laughs> and remember, this asshole has in the next room Street Fighter the movie, the game, the arcade machine. That's right. The waste of no, I actually like it. No, it's, no, awesome. it's, it's, it's awesome. You know what? I'm gonna go fire it up right now. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Creeper. Sure, you can. Oh. <laughs>